what's your financial goal? You want more money? Turn what you know into dough. Start hanging out with the people who have it. You create wealth on your own terms. It is not only your rights, but your duty to build wealth. You are fiscally fabulous, and it's time to enjoy your legacy. You're listening to Fiscally Fabulous with Dr. Teresa R. Martin Esquire, a podcast that aims to provide you with the tools, guidance, and encouragement you need to build your wealth, enjoy your wealth, and leave a lasting legacy. Dr. Martin is an accomplished attorney, speaker, business consultant, and real estate strategist, an all-around self-made success who provides highly sought-after expert consulting in the creation, growth, and maintenance of generational wealth. Hello, fabulous. It's Dr. Teresa Martin, your favorite legal and business strategist, and you're tuned in to This Was Fabulous Lifestyle, the voice for legal, business, and real estate. And today is no different. We have a great show for you today. The minority entrepreneurial landscape is very disturbing. Minority companies are being left behind. Did you know that minority firms earn 48% of the revenue of non-minority firms and 44% of the profits? These businesses are growing at a rate of is are not growing at a rate of the minority population. And this is why I'm saying it's very, very disturbing. It's been my experience, whether in the legal realm, helping clients navigate corporate compliance, or as a business strategist, helping them accelerate their profits or their business real estate revenues. But seeking entrepreneurial help, all small businesses need three primary things to grow their business education and business management skills, access to funding, and access to sales markets. And the minority business owner, it is no exception for them or us. Today, we're gonna focus on being unapologetically profitable in business. To help us dig into this statistic a little bit more and learn more about how we can fight back on the entrepreneurial fight, we are joined today by Dr. Stacy N.C. Grant, who is the founder of Destiny Designers University training development platform for faithpreneurs. Dr. Stacy, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to be here with Fiscally Fabulous a Lifestyle. Dr. Teresa Martin Esquire, you are amazing. This platform is amazing. How to help us really be fiscally fabulous. That is something that we should all endeavor to do. So to be here today, to talk about the staggering statistics, but to give some hope that there is opportunity for us to fix the things we're willing to face so that we can be profitable unapologetically in the marketplace. That's my mission. I have bumped, bruised, fallen down, slid over my way to get to this point in growth and development when it comes to an entrepreneur and being someone who's been a serial entrepreneur and starting and figuring out what's the pathway. You know, a lot of businesses, they have a great idea. They could maybe make the best cake this side of the Mississippi, but they don't have the business skills, practices, systems in place that can allow them to really grow and grow beyond just knowing a good recipe, but knowing how to be fiscally fabulous when you're building your income, when you're building your revenue streams. And for me, everything hinges on faith. So faithpreneurs, that's my audience, faith-based entrepreneurs with a fidelity to God in organizing, managing, and operating their businesses, and or faith-based professionals looking to add another stream of income to their personal economy. So Destiny Designers University has become that go-to training and development platform for our faithpreneurs. And then we get to gather annually at our annual faithpreneur weekend to dive deep into the three areas that are truly important in sustaining that fiscal fabulous, I'm gonna call it fiscal fabulosity because I'm just extra, right? So we focus on revenue, resources, and relationships. The three things that I wish someone had counseled me on earlier on in the entrepreneurial endeavor to really understand how important it is to leverage those three things so that you can sustain and create a profitable legacy. So I'm excited to talk about it today. I am so excited. I am so excited. You bring such energy to this, but we want to backtrack just a little bit because we need to know a little bit about Dr. Stacy. Oh, and when did you start this in, in this industry? Oh, well, look, so since 1995, I first started with my business as what they call a side hustle. You know, I did not listen to my mentors when they told me to go deep in a niche, you know, create a niche, become 
known in this area. And I started doing training development and I branched off and was doing event planning. So I was doing it in addition to working in corporate America. And then 2001, I stepped out on faith to say, it's time to run this business full-time. My last corporate job, I was the VP of operations and it was great, but my soul was feeling crushed because I was doing things that didn't bring me joy and I wasn't using all of my skills. I wasn't using the oil to fill my vessels. So I kept moving forward and we worked out some kinks. We reorganized, repositioned what we were offering. And then finally, in 2014, we decided to launch Destiny Designers University. And that is our classroom without borders, where we graduate to the next best version of who we are by turning inspiration into results. And we do that through the training and development platform that we have created. So I'm excited. It's been a journey. And every lesson I learned, every expensive learning curve, I don't call them mistakes, every expensive learning curve was for a reason so that I can help expedite the process for our faith to become cash flow positive and fiscally fabulous. Oh, this is so, oh, this is so fantastic. And now you see the energy. You see what's being brought to you today. This is definitely a topic that you do not want to miss. So when we return, we will explore the problems which exist for the minority entrepreneurs, physically fabulous entrepreneurs, and definitely faithpreneurs. We'll be right back. For many women entrepreneurs, the struggle is real. We arose becoming stronger with every fight. Wealth is what we built from that together. A wealth of resources, a wealth of knowledge, and a wealth of powerful businesswomen. When you are ready to achieve financial freedom and become fiscally fabulous, call. It will not be wealth that empowered your success. It will be this call. EnjoyYourLegacy.com, 646-437-7139. Well, welcome back to Fiscally Fabulous Lifestyle. Today, we're discussing the topic, being unapologetically profitable in business with Dr. Stacy, who's the founder of Destiny Designers University. So Dr. Stacy, who does this problem of profitability or lack thereof primarily affect? It affects a lot of minority business owners just in the simple fact that the real challenge is access to capital and being able to leverage that capital so that you can have a sustainable economy in your business. And what I found through the years of doing this from being there myself, so I'm not talking about theory, I'm talking about understanding it from the core principle of having a great idea, wanting to deliver a wonderful service or product, but you haven't taken the time to really figure out how to sustain the income that you can generate on a monthly basis. So what happens is we stay in bootstrap mode for longer than we need to be. We stay in the mode of we're robbing Peter to pay Paul. If we can sell 10 units of one thing, then we can pay the electric bill. If we can sell one more, then maybe we can pay the mortgage. And that's the wrong mindset to be in. So a lot of minority-owned businesses lack the training. And the education is not that they're not capable. It's not that they don't have superior products and services, but they haven't had enough of the training and development to help them really understand how to create a profit and loss statement, how to really look and do the projections on what you want each month to come in. Something as simple as, let's say your goal per month is a or week is $1,000. So how many units at what price do you need to sell that to ensure that you have $1,000 coming in? And should you be overreaching to say, I don't want to sell more than 100, I want to sell 150. So I have some cushion for those rainy days. There's a rainy day for every business, but for minority businesses, when the country, let's use now, COVID-19, all these things that are happening and going on, the country has caught a cold. Well, for minority businesses, we have pneumonia, right? Because we're in a, a whole nother situation of trying to figure out how to keep our doors open, how to keep business coming in, because we don't have contingencies in place. A lot of things are predicated on what we do. We haven't automated some of our sourcing and the things that we're able to deliver our products and our services in. So it's really just learning. Education can change and fill the void that we see happening with minority businesses. And then we also have to support our own. We have to be able to recycle that revenue within our communities so that we can grow. and collaborate. I mean, there's so many ways that we can solve this problem, but if we don't even exist or, or acknowledge that it exists, then that's the first issue. 
Like we have to be able to have the hard conversations to be vulnerable and to know that you ask for help, not because you're weak. You ask for help because you want to remain strong. You want to be fiscally fabulous. You invest your time with someone like Dr. Teresa Martin Esquire. You come to Destiny Designers University, our annual gathering at Faith Penal Weekend, so you can get that training and development. So you put the pieces in place to ensure that you're leveraging everything within your capacity to sustain a profitable legacy. It's not just a one-off. It's not just to sell two or three items or to have four or five consultations, but how do you put the infrastructure in place so that we're no longer half of the revenue generating, if that much, businesses within America? Because money is being made. Even in the midst of the challenges that we see, I was just on the phone with another one of my girlfriends who was negotiating a $15 million deal. There's money somewhere. They print in the money. Reallocation. That's what it is, right? The re this is the reallocation in every single um, downturn, if you will. Pandemic, the mortgage crisis, you know, F F round 11, all the different things. It's a shift. And I always say shift happens, right? So one of the things that we want to pay attention to, like you're, what you're talking about, is the lack of recycling dollars, if you will, right? And we have our mentors who always talk about recycling those you know, dollars and how long it doesn't stay into our communities and things of that sort, when you say collaboration. So with that, Dr. Stacy, what would you say some of the common misunderstandings associated with this problem lie? Where does that lie? So it lies in if I collaborate, let's just start there. If I open up and share details about my business and how I operate with another business, they'll steal my stuff and we can't exist in the same place. And that's not the truth. You have to think about what can make you stronger. We all have areas where we can be stronger. So one of the myths is that black businesses can't work together. That's a lie. I work with Dr. Teresa Martin Esquire. I work with a, a, I can't even name how many businesses that we collaborate on a common goal. So if I have one piece for Destiny Designers University, we focus on four areas mental, spiritual, financial, and physical. I'm not going to train and develop all of our faith and noise in every single area. So I bring in experts like Dr. Teresa Martin who can talk to and speak to a certain area of expertise as a thought leader and an influencer. And that collaboration now brings more clientele into her business as well as more people working through and negotiating how they're able to gain the resources and the knowledge to succeed in business. So it makes sense, it's a win-win, but there has to be some added value that you're bringing to the table when you talk about collaboration. I'm gonna use another quick example, Dr. Teresa. In this new world, transportation and traveling has been limited. So people who did services at the airport they didn't have contracts coming in. They weren't able to necessarily do the same amount of business that they did. But one smart business owner, another minority owned business said, well, we can't transport the way we used to, but there's some restaurants that need to do takeout that need to get their food to their client. So what do they do? They collaborated so two small businesses could win and one became the driver for the restaurant to do the delivery. So they still are able to incur revenue as well as the restaurant is not only able to service their clients, but they have now a vehicle to do that. So that's a great example of collaboration and thinking outside of this myth that we can't work together. I mean, this is just, you know, fantastic. And, you know, we speak about this all the time about the collaboration and, you know, people, you know, always say that you can't, you know, combine faith and finances and, you know, you build it and money and the people will come. All these things are things that, you know, are untrue because you have to build building a business. You got to build systems and things of that sort. So I love the fact that you actually add faith and finances and entrepreneurship. And that is really, really one of the problems that we have had in the minority community when it comes to business. So without further ado, we definitely gotta come back and continue this, this topic. So when we come back, we're gonna tackle the topic of the payoff of entrepreneurship. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. 
Welcome to RIA NYC, where eager to learn entrepreneurs become wealthy and happy to teach investors. Nothing happens until you decide to change your life. Oh, and do it in great company. Call us today and build your empire. Oh, welcome back to Fiscally Fabulous. This is Dr. Teresa Martin, and today we have been discussing the topic of being unapologetically profitable in business with Dr. Stacy, who is the founder of Destiny Designers University. So, Dr. Stacy, what is your solution to the problem we've been discussing for the minority entrepreneur? I love that we're talking about this, number one, and I just want to congratulate everyone that's tuning in because this is the place to get the information. So one of the ways that I've found is the methodology that I've created, my 3D process of moving us from that space of not getting the return on our time and investment and really putting in the work to be able to become fiscally fabulous, to become cash flow positive entrepreneurs. And that 3D development is starts with discovery. So this is a discovery period for you really to go into the books, go behind the curtain, so to speak. And we go through a systematic way that we uncover where the gaps are, where the things that you're missing or not seeing and how your structured business is operating. So no matter where you started or how you started, it takes time to go through and look at, is this the best structure for your business? Do you have the systems in place, the automations? What sort of process? Are you taking people through? What kind of service are you delivering? What kind of product are you developing? And that discovery stage gives you an opportunity to catch the things that you might not have catched in your business plan. It gives you the opportunity to really review because a business plan or a business summary should be a living document. It should grow as you grow. It should be flexible and be able to move along the growth rate that you are having in your business. And then we move from that discovery process to discipline development. Everything requires discipline. And for me, you know, I learned that in the church. I wasn't always obedient, but I learned her that discipline begins in the church. So if you can be disciplined in your walk with Christ, if you can be disciplined in how you get up and eat right, if you can be disciplined in how you take care of this one temple that we get, sidebar, it would be nice to have Beyonce's body, but I got to deal with mine. So I had to get up and I have to move it, right? So everything that we do requires a certain level of discipline. And with business, it's going to require the time to go through the paperwork. And let me be the first to say, I hate paperwork. Right? If there was any other thing on this planet, it was not like, oh my gosh, like this is like picking needles in my eye. But discipline development requires you to go through things like the paperwork, like the record keeping, like the tracking, so that when you are posed with opportunities like the PP, uh, uh, pay, payroll protection funding, the EDIL laws, all these things that are coming out to help your business. If you don't have your house in order, you haven't been developing it with a certain level of discipline and you lose out on the opportunity to be able to actually receive funding to hold a gap while you move to deliverance. And deliverance, deliverance is becoming fiscally fabulous. Deliverance is becoming cash flow, cash flow positive so that you can track it. You can start projecting, you can start estimating where you need to spend your time and energy. Because if businesses aren't spending their time and energy in the right spaces and places, then we're not gonna yield a profit. So it takes the time for us to go through this 3D holistic approach on making your business become fiscally fabulous and understanding what cash flow positive means. No one wants to be broke. That's a sickness in and of itself. That's a pandemic. And we need to kill all the broke businesses, right? Because if you're in business, it has to make money. And there was a time where I didn't totally get that. I wanted to help save the world. I wanted everybody to have and do it. Oh, I'll help you. I'll give you a discount before you ask for it. No, sir, no, ma'am. If you're a business, you have to make sure you go through the stages that will get you to the finish line of going from free to fee, going from procrastination to action, going from confusion to clarity, going from frustration to implementation so you can get on the other side and be able to employ other people, be able to add to the bottom line of our community's wellness and be able to leave a legacy for your children's children. Oh, this, I mean, and you, and you know, generational wealth, that's what it's all about. You know, being fiscally fabulous, being a true faithpreneur is what it's all about. And I want you to just talk to our audience about, you know, how they can actually benefit from working with Dr. Stacy, Like how can they benefit from applying your solution? So the testimonies that I've received from the people that I've worked with, it moves them into action. 
I've heard Dr. Stacy. I've been working at this for so long. I start and then something happens, something distracts me, some life changing event. And I feel like I go three steps or 10 steps backwards. So what I'm able to do through the processes that we develop is keep you moving because when you stay in action, you build traction. And when you build traction, you get to results. So it's not just being inspired for the, the moment or the minute because I said something that tickled your funny bone. It's about how do you transform that into results? So we're results driven. So we're able to measure what you're doing, how fast you're doing it, how slow you're doing it, what needs to be adjusted so you have the results. And the results are the benchmark of success with working with me. The results are people publishing the books. Their results are people launching their business. The results are people actually going out and buying their first piece of real estate. The results are people are taking stock in their future success now because they realize as one of my signature training states, it's now or never. Your dreams can't wait. Oh, this has been awesome. This has been awesome, Dr. Stacey. Thank you so very much. Today, we've been discussing being unapologetically profitable in business with Dr. Stacey, who is the founder of Destiny Designers University. Dr. Stacey just explained her 3D methodology, discovery, discipline, development, and deliverance. You can engage Dr. Stacy to learn more about her 3D methodology to the entrepreneurship struggles that you may be experiencing, you know, by registering for our Faithpreneur Weekend at faithpreneurweekend.com or visiting destinydesignersuniversity.com. So thank you so very much, Dr. Stacy, for blessing us with your pearls of wisdom on today's show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Well, guys, stay tuned. We will. We will be right back. I am getting so tongue-tied. We will be right back after this show break. So much has changed in the world, and reasons for legal counsel are many. With the law offices of Teresa R. Martin PC, you walk in looking for solutions, but when you walk out, you walk out with a growth mission and a support network. Get an attorney in real estate and business who knows and understands how to eliminate debt. Teresa has built an empire designed to grow businesses and strengthen communities. MartinLegal.com well, Welcome back, fabulous. Today's show was packed with pearls of wisdom from our guest, Dr. Stacy N.C. Grant. As you know, the purpose of Fiscally Fabulous Lifestyle is to take the fear out of business ownership and real estate investing. For a purposeful today, and even brighter tomorrow. It's the spot where we speak with successful entrepreneurs to discover their unique insights, their experiences, and their strategies for success. It's also the spot where you, the viewer, can write a question to be answered on the show. And today's question is, what is a limited partnership? Now, this is a great question, and I'm so glad for the viewer for writing in because there are many tax benefits to using a corporation, an LLC or LP. And many businesses, business expenses are easily written off and in the right structure, pre-tax dollars can be used to value the packages that you actually put together, as well as the risk of an IRS audit. You know, So the question regarding LPs is a separate legal entity. That's what it is. And it gives you the limited liability and the asset protection that you need. And the owners of an LP are known as general and limited partners, right? So the management resides exclusively with the general partner. Now, while the limited partners are limited in their liability, the general partners are personally liable for the LP activities, the limited partnership activities. So this unlimited liability can be resolved by forming a corporation on LLC to be the general partner. So it is a little confusing and it can be mistaken, an LLC versus an LP, you know, but you definitely want to make sure that you get the right information. Go to an attorney that is familiar with business incorporations or formations to make sure that you are in compliance and what you need to do. So I want to thank you for the question and keep them coming. You know, remember, if you have a burning question in the area of legal, business, or real estate, you can contact us by visiting FiscallyFabulousTV.com and leave your question. We'll see you on next week's episode. And remember, you are Fiscally Fabulous and you are worth it. 
This has been Fiscally Fabulous with Dr. Teresa R. Martin Esquire. If you would like to learn more on how you can build generational wealth and leave a lasting legacy, go to www.enjoyyourlegacy.com and be sure to subscribe. Thank you for listening. Until next time.